announcing that the U.S. government has approved for us uh, finding licenses to start uh, uh, shipping H20s. Nvidia was banned from selling AI chips to China, but it can now do so again. No big announcement, no headlines, just a quiet green light from Washington. But why? Why would the US reverse such a bold restriction? And what's really going on behind the scenes? Chapter 1. The Quiet Comeback In July 2025, NVIDIA, America's AI chip titan, received quiet permission to resume selling its H20 chips to China. After months in lockout, the world's most important AI marketplace gets flipped back on overnight. You've got to picture the scene in Shanghai tech offices, exhausted ByteDance and Alibaba engineers getting the news on encrypted comms. Their AI projects, once stalled by US export controls, jolted back to life. The banhammer lifted, inventories released, servers ready to roar, Wall Street picked up the signal instantly, a silent earthquake running through the chip supply chain. But how did this even happen? Two months ago, these AI chips were a national security threat. Today, they're approved cargo. What changed in the shadows between April and July? Chapter 2. The ban that broke billions. Let's go back to April, when the US Commerce Department hit the brakes on Nvidia's China business. The focus? Not just the ultra-high-powered H100s and Blackwell GPUs, already banned, but also the H20, NVIDIA's so-called safe-for-export chip. At first, the H20 had been greenlit. NVIDIA painstakingly engineered it to be less powerful, stripping features to stay just inside the regulatory green zone. But US officials shifted the rules without warning. The rationale? Even watered-down AI chips, paired with clever software and scaled by Chinese engineers, could still give an edge to China's military or Big Brother surveillance state. This bureaucratic move didn't just wound China's tech giants, it walloped NVIDIA. The company, fresh off a record run, was blindsided, $5.5 billion in revenue at risk, billions in order cancellations. Investors freaked. NVIDIA's stock took an instant nosedive, down 6 to 7% in a day. For context, China accounted for $17 billion of NVIDIA's annual revenue, over 13% of its global sales. Sidelined overnight, Chinese partners scrambled to find alternatives. US policymakers patted each other on the back for being tough, but the fallout was massive. Chapter 3. Jensen Huang's Bold Move Through all the chaos, one figure quietly emerged as the story's boldest player, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang. Known more for his signature leather jackets and product launches than bare-knuckle politics, Huang suddenly went into high-stakes diplomatic mode. According to insiders, this wasn't your typical boardroom pitch. Huang made it personal, requesting closed-door meetings with President Trump and senior US officials as NVIDIA's future in China hung by a thread. His argument, banning US chips wouldn't kneecap China. It would launch their next big sprint toward homegrown alternatives even faster. If we pull out now, Huang warned, US leverage disappears. Our technology leadership means nothing if China just pushes harder on its chip programs. Someone else, maybe not as friendly, will fill that void. Just as crucial, NVIDIA's global ambitions were on the line. The company was investing billions in next-gen supercomputers, and a punishing, indefinite China ban would gut its margins and reshape the global chip game. Huang's conversations behind closed doors even included hints at massive new US-based investments, sweetening the deal for the administration. Chapter 4. Only one chip gets the green light. So, after months of back-channel bargaining, what emerged from Washington's back rooms? Not a complete reversal, but a calibrated opening, not capitulation, but calculation. Only the H20, NVIDIA's deliberately capped restricted performance chip, got the new license. NVIDIA's flagship H100 and Blackwell GPUs, still strictly off-limits for China. But the H20, good enough for the bulk of mainstream AI, big data and advanced cloud work, suddenly hit the export fast lane. Quick side note for the techies, the H20 is no slouch. With 96GB of cutting-edge HBM3 memory and competitive throughput, it still powers many top-tier Chinese AI deployments, chatbots, search, recommendation engines, you name it. It just doesn't hit military-grade, ultra-high bandwidth AI tasks that the latest US chips enable. 
Washington opted for a control don't kill policy. By licensing only the H-20, the US limits Beijing's access to bleeding edge AI hardware while keeping China dependent on American tech. Nvidia can serve its best customer again, but the boundaries are strictly drawn. For Chinese tech giants like Tencent and Alibaba, it's a bittersweet win. Their research teams can build and scale AI platforms, but everyone knows they're working with a leash. Chapter 5. Why Now? If you're wondering why this reversal happened quietly, now, without fanfare, well, it's about much more than just chips. What's really at play is a sprawling high-stakes trade chessboard stretching from Silicon Valley factories to the mines of Inner Mongolia. In the weeks leading up to July, China started making noises about new restrictions on rare earth minerals, the raw materials essential for everything from EV batteries to smartphone magnets and advanced AI chips. Beijing didn't shout its warnings, it just hinted through trade channels, sending a jolt through global electronics makers. Meanwhile, geopolitical tensions were building in Taiwan, South China Sea maneuvers, new tariffs, headline after headline raising the stakes. The US administration suddenly needed a pressure valve. Behind closed doors, officials quietly linked chip and mineral access. We'll reopen limited AI chip exports if you keep rare earths flowing. It's not detente, it's real politic at its sharpest. Both sides needed a win. The US avoided a tech and manufacturing crunch, and China got access to world-class AI tools. Nvidia's green light wasn't just an economic nod. It was a strategic move checked against a dozen other trade and security levers. That's why you didn't see a press conference. Every word and whisper was precisely calculated. Chapter 6. A Strategic Dependency So, why does the US keep letting Nvidia back in the game after months of a crackdown? Here, things get even sharper. Commerce Secretary Lutnick, cutting through any spin, sums it up. This isn't about trust. It's controlled dependency, a clever patch that keeps China tethered to American technology. Instead of erecting a total wall, Washington gives China access to just enough, not the best chips, but good enough to keep their AI ambitions running, their factories productive, and their engineers reliant on US supply chains. The logic? As long as China needs Nvidia parts and tech, the US has leverage both politically and economically. China may grumble, but every server, every robot, every cloud deployment that still needs a California-made chip gives the West a little more time, a little more control. But this isn't comfort food for strategists. It's an uneasy tactical balance. Sell just enough to keep the pipeline snug, but never enough to let Beijing leap ahead. The goal isn't friendship, it's managed dependence. A high wire act with the world's biggest tech powers holding both ends of the rope, never quite trusting the other to let go. Chapter seven, what this means for AI power. This quiet licensing saga is about much more than profit, more even than national pride. You're watching the global AI arms race in real time and the stakes couldn't be higher. The country that controls the best chip sets the pace in everything from next-gen robotics to cyber defense, from economic modeling to military automation. For now, allowing Nvidia to sell some chips to China helps the US keep money flowing home and just as importantly, keep Chinese firms at least one step behind the absolute cutting edge. Every year, China depends on American tech for its AI backbone. Washington bets that the US stays in the lead, determining what's possible through access and updates. But critics on both sides are skeptical. What happens when Chinese engineers, empowered by even limited Nvidia hardware, learn and innovate at warp speed? Every month of dependency may be another month closer to independence. Chapter 8. Tech Meets Politics one of the wildest turns here, how this saga minted an entirely new kind of power broker, the tech CEO turned statesman. Jensen Huang, usually comfortable in the glow of keynote stages or R&D labs, became a player in the world's diplomatic backrooms. He didn't just argue about Nvidia's profits, he reframed the whole export debate. Innovation doesn't happen in isolation. Export bans don't protect us, they isolate us. That was Huang's message behind closed doors, and soon, leaders from Google, Intel and Microsoft joined in. Stifling America's own companies would only risk ceding the future to someone else. In 2025, tech leaders aren't just shaping markets, they're steering the world's largest countries through their most sensitive decisions. The lines between corporate lobby and foreign policy have never been so blurred. Chapter 9. Winners, losers and what comes next. Strip away the official statements, and who comes out ahead. On the scoreboard, Nvidia wins big, 
restoring a battered China revenue stream, keeping its crown as the supplier the AI world can't live without. Wall Street breathes easy and American policymakers keep California's job engines humming, but that margin of victory is thinner than it looks. China's leadership has never been more determined to end reliance, investing full throttle in its emerging chip giants and AI firms. Every door the US opens, even a crack, is also an opportunity for China to study, learn, adapt, and eventually outgrow its dependency. America's allies, meanwhile, are watching, wary of the next surprise shift in policy, questioning just how secure their access to the world's best tech is. For NVIDIA, every deal now comes with a diplomatic price tag. They've become a balanced player between governments, walking a tightrope strung over the chasm between politics, trade and innovation. The truth is, this was never about friendship or trust. It's a chess match about time and leverage. The US didn't let NVIDIA back into China out of hope or goodwill. They're banking on holding the leash a little longer, shaping the future just enough to stay ahead. But the real question now, did Washington just buy itself another year in the lead, or did it quietly fund the rise of its greatest competitor? The pieces are moving, the game is on, and the world is watching every move. If you find this video valuable, hit like, subscribe for more smart takes on tech and world affairs, and drop a comment. Thanks for watching.